Welcome back and thanks for sticking with us so far. Uh, just a few more sections left here in the training. Hopefully we've made you danger and dangerous enough to get started. So we're gonna still continue on with our theme of core patterns and how we create and edit objects. We spent uh, a lot of detail on KPIs themselves. Um, and now we're gonna switch over and look at groups and how groups relate. Now, let's refresh your memory just a little bit when we made this training KPI, this special one. We made it a fixed member of the group called Exton. And we also decorated uh, this attribute called plant name with the term Exton from the drop down list in the attributes. Okay, so that's our new KPI. Let's uh, go over to the groups tab and let's open some groups. Now I'm going to open the whole region that includes Exton and includes some of its subgroups. Let's actually take a couple of those out for just simplicity. Let's take out this Excel one. So we're going to take Exton, Long Point, and Summer Point. Um, which are three different groups under Region Northeast, and we're also going to take Region Northeast and the home group. Okay, and we don't have groups open yet, so I don't need to replace anything in case I'm changing what I'm looking at. So I'll just say OK. Now that opened up all of those groups, which isn't very many. Um, it's really just the home level group, which is on top of everything, then Region Northeast, and then the three groups within it. Okay. Now let's go look at uh, what those things look like in the actual software. Let's go up to the very top of the hierarchy. You see I have region northeast, which is at the home level. So over here, got the home level. And just remember on any object type, every line is one of those and every column is an attribute. So the home group is home. It doesn't need it to live anywhere. It's uh, just a system group. And then I have region northeast, which is a fixed member of the home group, but also well, we'll get to these selection queries in just a second. And within Region Northeast, you have Exton, Long Point, and Summer Point, and they are not a fixed member of anything. Um, they get their stuff uh, based on um, these selection queries. Okay, but let's look at them first. You've got Region Northeast. When I drill into there, I've got Exton, Long Point, and Summer Point. When I click into Exton, I have some subgroups under there, which I didn't choose to look at, and a whole bunch of KPIs and other things that are members of it at any level of the hierarchy. Okay, so let's go up here and stay with this, this grouping here. Now, when we were on the KPIs tab, we had a lot of options around how to configure them and in sections. And we have the same basic pattern here. You have the basic section, which are some of the core things you need. You have a user experience section and you have an extended section here. Same thing you had uh, in the KPIs tab and the same thing you have on pretty much any tab, okay? So the basics here, um, just like with KPIs, almost everything is optional. Um, if I wanna make a new group called training group, then I can do that. Okay, and I could give it a display order or not, and I could give it a home. Let's make this a member of the home group really quick and save it. Okay, there's nothing in it. Nobody's a member of it. It's just a thing right now. And if I go all the way up to the very top level, um, eventually once the, the system runs, you're gonna see another group called the training group. There it is. Okay, so now I have a new group, but I don't have anything in it. If I wanted to, I could go over to the KPIs tab, and instead of this being part of the Exton group, I could say, make it part of the training group. Okay, right there. Okay, I'm not gonna do that here. What I'm gonna do is actually delete the Exton part and say, you're no longer a member of Exton unless we define that for you. And I'm gonna show you how a KPI can be part of two groups. So if you remember on the custom attributes over here, I said it's a member of plant name equals, of, of plant name Exton, and it's also of unit type geothermal, okay? So if I wanna make that group or, uh, contain this training KPI and also the Exton one too, you'll see the Exton group has this KPI selection query. 
And what it's saying is that when anybody clicks on the group called Exton, for to determine which KPIs should show up, it's saying, go get anything where plant name equals Exton. And we know that our KPI has a plant name equal to Exton. But on this new training group, what we want to say is, let's say unit type equals geothermal. Yeah, and probably would be, and then I'll say, I'll commit that. So that puts it in here. And I could do additional levels here. Um, but what I also could do is call this the geothermal group. Okay, now let me save that. It's a member of the home group. When I go over here and refresh or after the cache cycle runs, there's my geothermal group. It moved up in display order based on its name. And now it has a whole bunch of KPIs in it. It actually has 35 KPIs in it. And if I click on that, we're gonna find out that one of those KPIs is the training KPI. We got a little error in it. Interesting. So anyways, it automatically showed up here, but it didn't leave the Exton group. So if I go into region Northeast and Exton, my training KPI is still there too, because it meets both of those requirements. This is how you make dynamic groups. Okay, very powerful concept. Um, and groups is something you can make very rapidly. Um, we've made many demo sites where we go through and we need 50 different groups at a whole bunch of different levels and you can just list them all out here and then make them fixed members of each other and suddenly you have a whole hierarchy. Then you can populate it with KPIs, something that the designer and this Excel-based format is really advantageous for, um, really fast to make things. So again, two important concepts. You can make groups that are fixed members of each other, or you can make them using these selection queries. And there are four different selection queries. There's the group selection query. That means every time I click on this group name, Go, what other groups do you want me to find? Okay, when I click on this group, what KPIs should exist in it? What other chart types should exist? And what tables should exist? Okay, so if I'm doing dynamic groups and tables and other chart types exist, I also, and I want them all to be dynamic, then I need to put those selection queries in there. Now I can have a mixture of fixed and dynamic grouping as well. So I could have no chart selection query, but make a specific chart and just call it a fixed member of that group and it'll still show up there. So all of those things uh, work just the same. Now let's scroll to the right and see how we can do other groupings here or other things. So the next thing you'll see after I get past the table selection query is all of those custom attributes because custom attributes are not specific to KPIs. Custom attributes can be defined for any object in the system. In fact, once you make an attribute, like unit type or plant name or any other thing you want, um, then it is automatically available to every object in the system and you can do that, okay? So that is the custom uh, attributes, which is your next uh, section. Then you have a user interface, uh, user experience section. And in this case, this is one of the best places to show you what we described way back at the beginning of the training, which is site-wide versus override settings. And I'll show you a quick example of that here in the web browser. So if I go all the way to the top of the hierarchy, if I click into region Northeast, so I'm on this list view or what we call the roll-up view, even though I have other visualizations I can view this on. When I click region Northeast, it goes down a level, but it is viewing it the exact same way, meaning I have the exact same visualization here. Let me go back up to that level. And in this next case, I'm gonna click on the global group. And when I do that, you'll see that it goes to the map view of what I'm looking at automatically. So that is an override setting. The default for the whole site is list, but on this particular group called global, somebody overrode that to take me automatically to the list view. Now, what I'm gonna do on our training group over here is say that my default group view is going to be 
uh, let's also do, let's do my default KPI view on the geothermal group is going to be the KPI map. So normally I would go down to a list and let's save that. Okay. So when I go back over to the home and I go to my geothermal group, it automatically went to this KPI map view. And that's a great example of showing you that override. You have the site-wide settings and then an individual object can be overridden in any way. And there's a lot of other ones. Do you want by default KPIs to be expanded or collapsed? And expanded means showing all the child groups. Do I want to show or hide these groups? Do I want to show or hide spark lines on this particular group? That means if I'm on a list view of this group, for a particular group, I might not want this historical view, or I might not want a certain view listed in there. I can turn it off on an individual group. Um, I can have specific start and end times for an individual group. Groups can have their own geolocation and even be moving objects as well. And this is really important. You might have, you know, let's say you have a truck or a, a reactor or a distillation column or any other asset um, that has 10 KPIs associated with it. Maybe you have a temperature and a pressure and a vibration and a humidity. And you may, uh, if it's a truck, you might have speed and fuel and all kinds of stuff. But the location of these things is identical for 10 different KPIs. So you don't want to put the geolocation just on the KPI because then they will be 10 individual objects sitting at the same spot. It'll turn into just a little pie chart. And when you try to break it apart, it'll just turn into a list, which is okay. But what's more interesting is to leave the geolocation off of those individual objects and put it at the group level. Then you have a group with a dedicated pie chart in it. It behaves the right way. And that individual object with multiple KPIs is always going to be in the same location. So that's just a little bit of best practices. Um, and then I'll show you a few little tricks and other things. You can control the zoom level um, for uh, Google Maps when you're viewing it in the browser, if you want it to be automatically zoomed out or zoomed in. Again, all these are optional. You don't have to do any of these things. What you show on there, do you want the name and also the info column on it? Um, we can do that also on the KPIs. And then over here on the extended section, it's very similar to what you saw before. We have an info column for the group. We have units of measure for the info column and URLs. We have what do you want to call each of the column names? So let's change that here for instead of actual, let's call it current, just on this one group. This is another great example of an override. So by default, the column name for this would be called actual, as you can see here. But when I refresh it, you're going to see that it's called current now. Okay. And if I go to a different group, let's go back up and go to region Northeast and then uh, an extant and look at some KPIs. You'll see in this group, it's still called actual because I only overrode it for this particular one. Okay. Um, you can control the display name. Do you want the group? Uh, do you want uh, to show the info column in this group or hide it? Uh, lots of other things. Um, what priorities? Uh, any links? Just like on KPIs, you can have as many links as you want in there. And then also parameters. Okay. Now, one thing you might be asking yourself is why would I need parameters on a group? And this applies to any object in the system. Parameters are not just for getting a numeric value or a time series value from a data source. You can use it for all kinds of things. And let me give you one of the examples that we like to throw around inside of Transparent. We call it the rail car example. That means you might have a bunch of rail cars uh, rolling around your country, and they have specific cargo and specific destinations and other things in their definition. And that changes, and that lives in a data source somewhere. So let's say there's a rail car inbound to San Francisco right now carrying tires, okay? 
and I might want a group of KPIs that's called all rail cars inbound to San Francisco carrying tires, right? My tire SF group, let's say, if let's say I made one here. And how do I dynamically only include the rail cars that are inbound to San Francisco right now that are carrying tires? Well, I would have custom attributes over here like asset and plant type and category, but instead I might have two, one is destination and one is cargo. And the attribute, instead of putting a fixed value like destination equals San Francisco or cargo equals, equals tires, I could put P1 for destination and P2 for the cargo and then over on the parameters section define what that is and those data sources would instead of delivering me just a numeric value are going to deliver me the answer which is what is its current destination and what is its current cargo so if along the way to san francisco they dropped off all the tires and they added flowers to that rail car well it no longer meets that requirement so now it might show up in a different group or once it arrives in san francisco and the data source is updated with where is that rail car going next then all of that rail car and all of its attributes and all of its kpis and everything associated with it should move over to a group called uh, all rail cars destined to seattle with whatever cargo or maybe you just want to care about its destination only so what I'm really getting at is that you can dynamically change all of the options in here and you can add parameters which allow you to make dynamically moving and changing groups. Then you have a dynamic moving hierarchy. So if you really have a situation like that, um, we can work with you to make sure that it's all fully automated and then your system and even all your groups are changing and all the KPIs move around like they should, both physically on the maps, but even in their membership of groups and all the other attributes. So you can take this to quite a crazy level. Again, it's all optional. You don't have to do any of it. Okay, so that is a little bit about groups, both dynamic and static. So we're almost done here and uh, let's uh, take a pause and move on to the next section and get ourselves to the end of this training. Thanks for sticking with us so far.